Super Rugby folks, the final of the quarterfinals is certainly the tastiest one on paper. The Brumbies fourth against the Hurricanes fifth. We're going to go through the lineups, some stats and predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one's going to go. But yeah, the other three games are kind of all predicted to be pretty comfortable home wins. This one is genuinely kind of predicted to be within a score, but we will get to that one in a second. But yeah, uh, it's away, it's in Canberra, the Hurricanes. Coming in hot after a good win over the Crusaders at home. The Brumbies kind of dispatched the Rebels pretty comfortably in their last home game. So, yeah, uh, it should be a pretty tasty one. They have met, obviously, once before in the regular season. And it was the Hurricanes over in Wellington who got a win. Uh, 32 points to 27. The Brumbies scored late in that game to kind of bring the scoreboard a bit closer and give it a bit of a grandstanding finish. But the Hurricanes still managed to kind of hang on well enough i seem to remember there was a lot of drop ball in that game fair few missed tackles and whatnot but um yeah it's going to be a different story you would imagine in canberra maria probably a bit of a tightener affair but we will have to see how things go uh for the brumbies they have named a relatively stable side from the one that played the rebels at the weekend uh james slipper Lockie lonigan and uh sifo kotai are your front row so slipper and lonigan uh, back into the 23 after not playing last week. Nick Frost and Caden Neville are your locks. Nick Frost is one of your key line-out men in Aussie rugby. I think he's like the third best guy uh, in the entire competition for taking line-out ball. So when you're thinking about setting up that mall, he's kind of the, one of the guys you have to shut down. Rob Valtini switches to six from eight. Jerome Brown and Pete Samu are there at seven and eight as well. Pete Samu is up from the bench, Mr. Versatility. And then Rob Valtini, you kind of think of him with his big block-busting carries, but I think he's the Brumbies' top tackler in the competition thus far. So uh, defensively, he's been a proper unit. Nick White's captain, he's at nine alongside Jack Debrosini, who is at 10, the big boot that is Jack Debrosini. They'll need to kick well, White and uh, Debrosini, because you don't want to give this hurricane side a chance to run it back here. Uh, Tua and Ikitao are the 12 and 13 combo with Tua up from the bench from last week in Sapsford switches to the wing because there's no Corey Tool this week. He has ruled out through injury, which is pretty devastating when you consider he's only behind Mark Talia for clean breaks and he's had nine tries. Corey Tool, including one against the Hurricanes in that last game. So Corey Tool is a big guy to be missing, but Sapsford will um, will look to emulate him as much as possible. Muirhead is on the other wing with uh, Tom Wright, the top run meter guy in the entire competition. They're at 15, so a proper attacking threat as well. Uh, replacements, McInerney Scoop and uh, Van Nick, alongside Tom Hooper, who drops to the bench. Luke Reimer, Ryan Lonergan, Noah Lollasio is back into the 23. And then Jesse Mogg in what um, will be his kind of final finals run with the Brumbies, as he's one of the guys leaving at the end of the year. Uh, for the Hurricanes, they have made minimal changes as well. I mean, they beat the Crusaders in their last game. So you don't really need to, to make much in the way of changes. Numia is back at loose head. Coles and Lomax are alongside him in that front row. Uh, Blackwell and Delaney are your locking duo with Flanders, Artie Salvia, and Braden Yose in that back row. Braden Yose showed some absolute wheels in that game against the Crusaders when he burned old Scotty Barrett, didn't he? So I'll need to keep an eye on him. I mean, Pete Samu and uh, Rob Beltini are no slouches. So they'll... Be sure to keep an eye on him. Uh, Artie Savi, along with his core stuff, with his big carries and his um, tackles and turnovers and whatnot, he's clocked up five try assists, which is nuts when you consider he's a loose forward. Most of the guys in that five try assists region are all kind of tens and nines and whatnot. So, yeah, he is a real special player. He's one to kind of watch as well. Likewise, Cam Roygaard, who's notched up nine tries, a proper attacking threat from, from the base. Uh, Brett Cameron's there at 10. Geordie Barrett and Billy Proctor have been a pretty good duo recently. Uh, 12 and 13. Proctor's coming. This is a good form. Geordie's loving a wee offload. Uh, Sinkinson and Naholo are your wings. And then Morby, who is the Hurricanes' top run meter guy, which is also not surprising being a fullback, is there at 15. But another proper danger man. Al Moore is back uh, on the bench as your hooker replacement. Muffaleo drops to the bench. Franks is there. Walker Leo Wede is also back into the 23. Uh, Karifi drops to the bench. Booth, Love, and Balin Sullivan make out the remainder of the replacements so yeah two pretty good looking sides man a bunch of all blacks and wallabies in both of them um stats wise the hurricanes are the top side for tries in this competition but the brumbies are second so it will be interesting to see if it becomes kind of a tight finals arm wrestle or if it's a bit of a try fest hurricanes have got more defenders beaten more clean breaks but the brumbies have got a better tackling rate and a better line out so 
there's kind of like sometimes you look at the stats and you're just like bam 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 one side kind of wins everything but this one's kind of a nice split but kind of stylistically the hurricanes are the top offloading side for the entire competition and guess who's dead last for offloads it is the brumby so very kind of different approaches to the game from these two sides uh both sides coming off their good final round wins like i mentioned the the hurricanes over the crusaders the brumbies over the rebels but the brumbies do have an extra day's rest having played on a friday rather than a saturday and uh they also have no travel factor uh the brumbies home record this year despite the fact they lost to the hurricanes away their home record is phenomenal uh, i believe they've only lost to the chiefs at home so they're a hard team to beat in canberra predictions wise the bookies are saying the hurricanes by one the rugby forecast algorithm splits the other way saying it is the brumbies by two so as i mentioned with the other three games kind of being predicted to be not too much in the way of a kind of close contest this one is at least on paper supposed to go down to the wire you guys let us know what your thoughts are who do you reckon is going to win it do you reckon the canes away or the brumbies at home if you're in the states and want to watch any of the super rugby quarterfinals flow rugby is the place to be link down in the description for flow but yeah you guys let us know your thoughts and um i'll talk to you guys again soon see you later.